Now let's talk about cochlear implants. Cochlear implant candidacy. Those with severe to profound bilateral sensory neural hearing loss, so both sides, they should have had a trial period with hearing aids. The family needs to have realistic expectations and you need a committed family. Cochlear implants are not a quick fix. They take a lot of intensive speech and language therapy. Some questions to ask prior to implantation. Is the implant consistent with the patient's medical or health status? So is the patient healthy enough to get a cochlear implant? Is it physically feasible? A cochlear implant only works with a healthy auditory nerve. It bypasses a cochlea that does not have the outer hair cell function and directly stimulates the auditory nerve, but there needs to be an auditory, an auditory nerve. Will the implant yield greater communication benefit than traditional hearing aids? So will the child or the adult get more out of the cochlear implant than a traditional hearing aid? Will the patient's psychological status, family dynamics, and education and rehabilitation settings support successful implantation and ongoing use of the device? Remember, an implant is not a quick fix. There are still deaf schools filled with children that have implants that aren't succeeding. It takes a lot of effort from the family and from the teachers and from speech and language therapists and the audiologist. Here's a quick picture of the cochlear implant. You have the outer part, the speech processor, and the transmitter, which is attached by a magnet to the receiver stimulator, which was placed inside the scalp. The electrode array travels down through the middle ear. It has nothing to do with the middle ear. It's just inserted through the middle ear to the cochlea. So the microphone on the speech processor picks up the sound in the outer ear. It gets processed and transmitted across the scalp to the receiver stimulator down to the electrode array where it directly stimulates the auditory nerve. So the internal receiver is implanted under the skin behind the pinna. It consists of a wire electrode and a tiny coil. There are up to 22 active electrodes covering a specific frequency range of the cochlea. For example, one cochlea, one electrode array might cover the frequencies from 500 to 800 hertz. So there are 22 of them that have to cover the entire range of sound, 20 to 20,000 hertz that we hear. So it's very gross system. It's not as fine as our typical cochlea, but it works amazingly well. A small microphone is attached to the ear hook that sits above behind the ear. It feeds electrical impulses to the speech processor, which is housed in the behind the ear casing, or to a body worn case that was an older, more um, out of fashion, out of date method. The pieces have gotten smaller as our technology has improved. The speech processor codes speech information, which is later delivered to a transmitter, which converts the magnetic impulses, which are then transmitted across the scalp to the electrode array. An electrical signal is induced from the magnetic field in the cochlea and flows onto the, to electrically stimulate the auditory nerve. So the outer hair cells aren't functioning properly, it skips the outer hair cells, bypasses the outer hair cells. It says, forget it, you're not working with outer hair cells. I'm going to directly stimulate the auditory nerve. So as you can see, the electrode array is inserted, coiling up into the cochlea. And those electrodes take on groups of frequencies and directly stimulate the auditory nerve. After the implant has been inserted, it's a same-day procedure. The patient can go home afterwards. It takes about six weeks to heal. 
Once everything is healed, the external components, meaning the speech processor, are fitted to the cochlear implant around four weeks after surgery, four to six weeks after healing. The audiologist then adjusts the stimulus parameters of the speech processor to best transfer the temporal, that means timing, frequency or intensity cues of the sound.